Welcome back to Poppy and Rye, boys and girls. Today we're going to chapter 14, which is titled Erith. So that lets us know that we're changing from the mouse setting back to the forest with Erith. Erith ran among the trees, heart pounding, quills rattling. He tried every dodge he knew to escape, as if some great beast were pursuing him. Though his Though this beast was his own feelings. He climbed trees. He threw himself behind bushes. It made no difference. He still felt miserable. When he found an old hollow log, he plunged into it. There, surrounded by the stench of pulpy rot and moldering fungus, he hunkered down and stared out at the rain, but found no relief. Never had he felt so miserable. Gradually, the storm subsided. The rain stopped. Water dripped. A gray mist clinging to the earth slithered through the dark trees like forbidden thoughts. Erith crawled out of the log and shook himself. Take hold of yourself, he muttered. He headed back to the ridge in search of the cottonwood tree he had climbed when Poppy had left him. This time, he found it. But when he reached it, he discovered... She was not there. All his desperation returned. Where is she? He muttered. Why did she leave me? What kind of friend is she anyway? Doesn't she know I needed her? She should be there helping me. With that, Erith wheeled about and trundled down the path he had seen Poppy take. As he came down off the crest of the ridge, he saw no sign of Poppy, only the pond where the beavers were hard at work. Erith stared bayfully at the beavers. They seemed to be working nicely together. At least they were smiling at one another. A family, he snarled with contempt. A happy family. Crabgrass up there snoots, Erith snapped. I'm going back to Dimwood Forest. With that, he turned, galloped up the hill, and plunged among the trees again, quickly passing through them. The next moment, he burst into an open area. Before him lay a sunken meadow filled with berry brambles and flowering vines. Paying no particular mind to where he was going, Erith hurled himself into the most clotted part of the thicket. It was a wild jumble with plants growing so closely together, he had to push and shove his way through the tangle of bushes. He was close to the middle when he was forced to stop. He could not move. His quills, caught in brambles and vines, held him fast. He was stuck. Though he could not move, the exhausted Erith was glad for the rest, glad for the quiet, glad he could not go anywhere. I'll stay here forever, he sighed. Till I die, it's better that way. And it won't be long either. Poppy was right. I'm old, very old. He closed his eyes and thought of home. He thought of Poppy. Momentarily, his anger rekindled. Then grudgingly, he admitted to himself that it was he who had told her to go off by herself. Maybe her leaving him was a little bit his fault. He sighed. The more he thought about her, the more he missed her. She was always so good-natured, kind, and brave. His best friend. Perhaps he should find a way to tell her that. Someday. With a shake of his head, he muttered, Pickle puke! And decided it would be better not to tell her anything. It wouldn't do. She might make fun of him, tease him. Call him that horrid word, old, again. Still, he might find her a seed or two. He could leave them where she might find them, as if by accident. Nothing more than that. If a porcupine didn't remain prickly, what could he be? Nothing. Eric settled down, relieved that it was impossible for him to do anything but stay stuck. It was better that way, much better. He didn't have to think or feel anything. He would just die. That, he thought, will show her. 
And that's the end of chapter 14.